This video is brought to you by MUBI, an online cinema streaming hand-picked exceptional films from around the globe. Get one month free at MUBI.com slash like stories of old. I watched the news waiting to hear a very specific combination of words, but they never came. Then one day I saw a news story about a train accident. And I heard them. There is a sole survivor, and he is miraculously unharmed. Almost two decades ago, director M. Night Shyamalan released Unbreakable, a film that used comic book tropes to essentially tell the story of a superhero who doesn't know he is a superhero. It wasn't until 2016 and the release of Split, which tells the inverse story about the birth of a supervillain, that Unbreakable was revealed to be the first part of a trilogy. A trilogy that came to its conclusion with the inevitable clash between these characters in this year's Glass. It is interesting to consider that Unbreakable was released in a time when comic book films were virtually non-existent, whereas Split and Glass came out in a time that is dominated by them. And it is perhaps because of this shift in the cinematic landscape that Shyamalan's Unbreakable trilogy is now mostly discussed and judged based on those terms, as a deconstruction of superheroes and comic book culture. In comics, you would go to a public place where all could see you. In comics, the parents of the villains always hold the key to understanding them. As such, the reactions to Glass were mixed, and many people felt unsatisfied by the resolution and by the commentary it seemed to provide. Although comic book analogies are certainly an important element in the film, I also feel there's a deeper layer to them that tends to be overlooked. In Unbreakable, Mr. Glass already explains that comic books are really a metaphor serving a higher purpose. I believe comics are a form of history that someone somewhere felt experienced. This sentiment is repeated once again in class. I believe comic books are a continuation of documentation that has gone on for centuries of what humans are capable of. That they are what someone somewhere saw or felt. It seems as if Shyamalan is asking us to look beyond the comic book analogies, to search for the deeper meaning in his superhero story. And today, I want to find out what that is. I urge you look past the Capes and monologuing villains. Are you with me? As a filmmaker, Shyamalan is known for creating stories consisting of multiple metaphorical and symbolic layers. And there's one in particular that always has an important presence, and that is his faith. All my scripts, I think, have a certain spirituality that is um, fairly unusual for a young guy in Philly playing ball, eating Big Macs to have. In an interview, he explains that his beliefs are shaped by Christianity as well as by Indian culture. Um, perhaps the acceptance that, that the body is not the, the end of your life, that the spirit continues is something that I just you know, accept because all these Indian ceremonies about um, ghosts or spirits in the house and protecting the house from spirits and um, it's just an, you know, an accepted thing over there and so it was something that I just assumed was, you know, common, but I guess it's not. As to his films, this has resulted in a vision of faith that aims to be universal. One that is not about the participation in any particular organized religion, but one that is personal, that is about the existential questions we all face at one point in our lives, and the realization that it is ultimately we ourselves who have to answer them. So what you have to ask yourself is what kind of person are you? Are you the kind that sees signs, sees miracles? Is it possible that there are no coincidences? This is also an important theme in the Unbreakable trilogy as the main characters we meet in Unbreakable and Split have all been damaged by trauma and are suffering from a subsequent lack of meaning that I think everyone has experienced to some degree. This morning was the first morning that I could remember that I didn't open my eyes and feel... sadness. 
I thought the person in the world had known had an answer for me. They represent the struggle to figure out one's place in life, to understand why certain things happen to us, why there seems to be a fundamental dissatisfaction in our hearts, an emptiness that cannot be filled. Do you know what the scariest thing is? To not know your place in this world. To not know why you're here. They show the despair that arises from the feeling of being trapped in a state of suffering, of being all alone, with no one to watch over you, quietly blaming yourself for not being strong enough to escape what is hurting you, for not being good enough. Perhaps even believing you do not deserve to be happy, that you are not worthy like everyone else. Well, we look at people who've been shattered and different as less than. What if? They're more than us. Here we can draw a connection with existentialist philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, whose work was largely centered around faith, not as a set of dogmatic principles, but as a personal challenge for each individual. He argued that human beings are basically split between the finite and the infinite, between the earthly and the divine, and that our existential struggles are the result of us not properly relating ourselves to that relation. He specifically warns against our tendency to search for the infinite within the finite, to search for absolute happiness within relative ends. Instead, he argues we should relate ourselves relatively to earthly matters, whilst simultaneously relating ourselves absolutely to the absolute end, to the infinite. And for Kierkegaard, this relation to the absolute can only be defined by the negative, which means that similarly to faith being defined by uncertainty, our connection to eternal happiness is defined by our suffering. Just as gold is purified in the fire, he wrote, so the soul is purified in sufferings. Your heart is pure. Rejoice! The broken are the more evolved. Rejoice! Kierkegaard's philosophy is obviously much more complex than this, but for the purpose of understanding the Unbreakable Trilogy, I think the main point is that it illustrates how people draw strength from the belief that they are connected to something higher, that there is a deeper meaning to their suffering. And however they define this higher source, be it as a conscious deity or simply as the unknown, it ultimately comes down to eternalizing a sense of humility against the grand mystery that is the universe. Have these individuals, through their suffering, unlocked the potential of the brain? Is this the ultimate doorway to all things we call unknown? Is this where our sense of the supernatural comes from. And this brings us to glass. For if we assume that Unbreakable and Split are about the importance of faith in the face of existential suffering, then Glass shows us the struggle of finding this faith in an increasingly faithless society. These are mediocre times, Mrs. Dunn. People are starting to lose hope. It's hard for many to believe the extraordinary things inside themselves as well as others. This becomes especially clear when the film introduces Dr. Staple. I understand that the three of you think you are superhuman. That you don't think you are normal. I am here to discuss the possibility that you are mistaken. Over the course of the film, Dr. Staple instills doubt in the main characters and their loved ones by offering ordinary explanations for what they see as extraordinary and superhuman abilities. It is possible that there was damage to the frontal lobe that you are unaware of. You can't possibly explain everything away. You believe your father is a real-life superhero. You believe he is almost immortal. You can see how some would say, you need this to be true. There was a lot of moisture from the boiler room down in the locker area where they were kept. The cartridges were possibly compromised. And some of the pellets hit the inside of the bars. It is at least possible that there is a practical explanation for this. To be fair, her motivations are not entirely unreasonable. 
In my video on Spider-Man 3, I discussed how the superhero fantasy is connected to a particular type of grandiosity, an inflated sense of self-importance that can lead to destructive narcissism. I specialize in a particular type of delusion of grandeur. I specialize in those individuals who believe they are superheroes. The Unbreakable Trilogy shows us how this discussion can be extended to the question of faith as well. For while David at least tries to use his powers to do good, we also see this belief in the supernatural being used for malicious purposes, with Mr. Glass committing acts of terrorism to manifest the divine, and with the Horde's crusade to purify the world of the unworthy. Two particular types of violence that are well documented in religious history. It is this violence that Dr. Staple seeks to prevent by cutting it off at the source, or to put it in Kierkegaard's terms, by completely eliminating our connection to the infinite. We try to stop both of you. If there is one of you, the opposite of you appears, it escalates, we step in. There just can't be gods amongst us. But I think it is here that Shyamalan shows us a different kind of grandiosity. For although Dr. Staple acts based on noble intentions, there is also an arrogance to be found in the belief that we can restrict the grandeur of the universe in human terms, that we can reduce the wonder and mystery into facts and numbers, and that we can exercise dominion over that of which we should be humbled in awe. This isn't so much a normative judgement about her philosophy, but it does highlight the futility of her actions. It shows that as long as the vastness and the mystery of the universe exceeds our understanding of it, there will always be a lingering connection to the infinite. There will always be existential suffering, a void that cannot be filled with definitive answers. And thus, faith, in whatever form it may take, is inevitable. I know what this is. This is the moment we are let in on the universe. And this is exactly what we see at the end of Glass. Despite her best efforts to erase it, Dr. Stable ultimately fails because of the very fact that faith is an intrinsic element of the human condition. Even in a time where it is suppressed or denied, Glass shows us that one reminder, one spark, is all it takes to reawaken it and mark the beginning of a new era of faith. Oh, Mama. This is not unlimited. Edition. This was an origin story <laughs> the whole time. There are unknown forces that don't want us to realize what we are truly capable of. They don't want us to know the things we suspect are extraordinary about ourselves are real. Whoever these people are who don't want us to know the truth, today, but I wonder if this really is the ultimate message of class, that we can't or even shouldn't deny faith, as it will prevail regardless of our efforts to suppress it, and that we should just ignore that even though it may inspire our inner superheroes, it will also inevitably lead to supervillains. For I believe that between simply accepting the inevitability of faith and trying to erase it altogether, Shyamalan offers another path, one that acknowledges suffering as our connection to the infinite, but uses it deliberately to channel not violence, but compassion. The power of true, loving, physical affection, it's like something supernatural. It's the lack of it that caused this, and only the true version of it can heal it. The Unbreakable Trilogy shows, above all, that the gateway to true compassion is not found in our strength, but in our weakness, in the mutual acknowledgement and sharing of our suffering. We are all vulnerable to fear and doubt. None of us really know ourselves, or our purpose. And it's okay to embrace that vulnerability, to not have all the answers, for it is exactly that what connects us. When we are no longer afraid to share our pain, we open the way to understanding, to mercy and forgiveness. And only then can we stop hiding. Only then can we truly exist in the light. They're all so scared. Belief in oneself is contagious. But I told them that I'm gonna hold the light now. We give each other permission to be 
be superheroes. We will never awaken otherwise. It's not so bad being in the light. One of the best things about cinema is that it allows us to articulate those parts of ourselves that too often go unexpressed. Our vulnerabilities, our fears, and to find such films that make us feel recognized, make us feel connected. I'm really glad I have Mubi. Mubi is an online cinema streaming a hand-picked selection of films from around the globe. Every day they present a new film, and every day they take one away. Whether it's a timeless classic, a thought-provoking documentary, or an acclaimed masterpiece, there are always 30 perfectly curated films to discover. It's a simple but highly effective way to start exploring the riches of cinema, and I'm happy to share this with you by offering 30 days for free. So head on over to movie.com slash likestoriesofold to begin your extended free trial today.